as respected leaders from the Southeast mount pressure on President Muhammadu Buhari to grant amnesty to Namde Kanu, leader of the outlawed indigenous people of Biafra. One thing they appear to have forgotten is that Kanu has a track record of breaking promises, it seems. Not only did Namde Kanu violate the terms of his bail in 2017, after his release from detention by a federal high court, he transformed into a personality that created an armed wing to attack the Nigerian state in his quest for the restoration of the Republic of Biafra in the southeast. Despite this, some leaders from the region are confident that they can keep him in check once he's released to them. So tell us what has changed between 2017, when Kano jumped bail and fled the country, and why he should be given a third chance. We are now being joined from Agua Taloku government area of Anambra State by Dr. Chukwemeka Ezefe, a former governor of the state. Dr. Ezefe was a member of the delegation that met with Buhari last week to plead for Kano's release. Welcome to the show, Dr. Ezefe, and good morning. Good morning. Thank you. Thank you very much for joining us. Well, Dr. Ezefe, the story out there uh, is that high-profile visit of Igbo greats to President Muhammad Buhari, and a major outcome that is in the papers uh, is that uh, your delegation uh, appealed to the president to consider a political solution. And he, he had said, reportedly, yes. that uh, he would not want to tamper with the separation of uh, powers, uh, but that although it's a difficult request, he will look into it. Now, what impression did you go away with? Do you think that, uh, you know, he will keep to the promise of looking into it and that your expectations will be met in this regard? Thank you very much. Before going into that direct uh, question, let me thank uh, some dignitaries. Uh, Minister Ige, Ngige was the person who negotiated uh, the appointment. Mbazuki Amechi not only led us, he applied to the president uh, to allow the meeting. So, yes. We talked to people who are familiar with the president after the meeting, and they told us that from the body language of the president, he took us very seriously, and we should take his promise to look into it very seriously also. We were quite happy. I must say, I took the opportunity to thank the president for the success of Anambra election, because I know what happened behind the scene uh, some of the time. So uh, I thanked him for that, uh, for the integrity, the transparency of it, which was uh, actually due to his conversation with the chairman of INEC. Thank you. Yes, but uh, what of the uh, question about uh, your expectations? Yes. Well, uh, that's why we ask the people, the ministers who work with the president and who were in the meeting we had with the president and who looked at the president's body, body language. Uh, we asked them, what should we go home with? And they said we should be hopeful. And I think, uh, uh, myself, I, I think I'm hopeful. Yes, because our leader, Mbazuki Amechi, made a very powerful, very powerful presentation. Somebody, some of us, uh, I don't know how fair God is, um, but Mbazuki Amechi is uh, a third, uh, 10 years older than myself, but he remembers things sometimes more than I do. Uh, I don't know, some people are very much gifted in very various ways. So anyway, thank you for the question. We are hopeful. And myself, I have some ideas 
to push on and I told the president I would do so. The ideas have to do with the fact that it is not just uh, Namikian. We have a Moho. We have the Middle Belt. We have a job. We have South South. We have Odua people, Yoruba. One way or the other, it may be necessary to put all the all these together because all of them are complaining about not being comfortable with the Nigeria situation, and I think uh, it's better to deal with them in a comprehensive way. Um, I don't know. I, I, I mentioned it uh, to the president, and they said, uh, "Okay, go ahead and submit your proposal." Right. We were led to believe from press reports that what your group that people are calling the Igbo Greats, the world, the leadership in the Southeast, demanded from the president was an unconditional release of Namdi Kanu. Can you confirm that? And what do you think the federal government will do in response to that? An unconditional release is quite a lot to ask for. Well, release is release. Uh, Masuki Ameji spoke for us. He made guarantees, he made assurances about our ability to control the situation after his release. But um, we don't know how the president saw that, but the way he treated us, I, I must say, uh, we were very happy. He was so punctual, he didn't keep us waiting for one minute. In fact, we kept him waiting. And uh, the way he spoke to us, for me, that was the first time seeing him in a long time. Uh, I saw him uh, first in his own house in Kaduna. But uh, this time, I was looking at him, and uh, he sounded very genuine. Okay, so with all these meetings happening, is it, is it safe to say that peace is coming back? And secondly, uh, the other... No, I didn't people, hear you. I didn't hear you. I said, is it safe to say that peace is coming back based on you know, the crisis we've had in a while? And all of this, uh, uh, have you guys to be talking to IPOB? Because take, for instance, uh, we still have the case of you know, sit at home that the IPV has said there's no sit at home any longer. But some groups, some people say some splinter groups here and there are still trying to enforce the sit at home with violence. You know, so is, is it safe to say everything is normalizing back in the Southeast and peace is returning to the Southeast like it should be? We are praying for peace to return and we believe it is returning. Our God answers prayers. Even prayers for sinners like me. Do you know that the outcome, not who won or who does who, the success of the Anambra election is proof that our God answers prayers. We call for prayers for, from various people. Even the Zokoto uh, bishop, I called him and in fact, he, he came both to Enugu and to Anambra and prayed a lot for us. And we have some people we are owing because we promise you for something after they pray and uh, we succeed. So I think God answers prayers. Peace will return to Anambra. And uh, I find some of the boys in IPOP, the big ones, very reasonable. Um, it was a difficult thing. But uh, it was eventually the called off sit at home. <laughs> Most of people are making money from this kind of situation. Those who are not at the core of this thing and they are exploiting the fears of the people. I sent my PA to go and get petrol in case there is no light so that you can, we can put on the generator for you. Do you know he came back and said the petrol stations are not open. Because of today is Monday, they are still talking about sit at home. I must confess that 
when the first seat at home was announced, I challenged it, and the head of IPOP gave instruction to, that it should be done away with. But <laughs> you have seen now, you've seen it has continued. Some people are gaining from it, but we pray God to get to the hearts of those who are gaining from it. And let them. Uh, we are aggressive business people in Japan, in Russia, everywhere in the world. And you say, come to Anambra and sit at home. Come to the East and sit at home. Sit at home and do what? How do you feed your children? It is not in our interest to kill ourselves because some people are attacking us. And that is why we have been begging for some of the people to understand. Most of the people, the leadership of our pub understands and is not interested in sit at home. But uh, some other people, I don't know what they are, I, 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 I'm imposing difficulties on our people. Well, uh, Dr. Izefe, now, <clears throat> Chief uh, Mbazuluke Amechi assured the president that uh, if uh, Namde Kanu is released, uh, that he will guarantee <coughs> that uh, there will be no form of agitation again uh, from IPO. Uh, can he really guarantee that? Because skeptics will say, well, this was how Namde Kanu was granted bail in the past, and uh, he jumped bail. Uh, they may even go for that and say, well, Chief Amechi himself uh, in the past has had calls to ask uh, members of the ESN to defend themselves if they are attacked by anybody. And you know Chief Amechi himself has a background as a trade unionist, uh, popularly known as uh, the boy is good. Uh, why should uh, you know, uh, the president not be cautious? In other words, uh, what is the guarantee? that the release of Unam de Kanu will automatically bring peace. The, uh, uh, you know, similar efforts made with regard to uh, Sunday Bohu, although he's in uh, Benenoir Republic, or with some other, you know, self-determination activists across the country. What is the guarantee that that will bring peace, trust, healing, reconciliation? That's the way I think it can be done, and uh, it brings peace. But I don't think, I was there, Mbazi uh, did not guarantee no agitation anymore. Uh -uh. That, that is uh, withdrawing people's freedom. So I think, um, yes, the president cannot jump at it. There are things the president said that made us very, very happy. You know, he makes reference to how they brought Khan uh, back home without not dealing with him over there in Kenya. So um, I think reason is coming to Nigeria. The president may, in fact, launch a new Nigeria with how he handles these protests from across the country. Four zones out of six uh, protesting. And I'm not sure that uh, uh, North East and North West totally are, are, are happy with the situation. I mean, uh, South East, South West, Middle Belt, within uh, South South, a job even alone, apart from the general South South movement. So um, you are right. Nobody can guarantee that, but effort will be made. And if we take a comprehensive look, deep look into the various protests, we can launch the new Nigeria before the president leaves office. 
Okay, sir. Well, I want to go from skepticism, which Dr. Abati referred to, to criticism. And I have two quotes I'm going to read to you, one by Arewa Consultative Forum. I'll start there. And they have said, why should somebody who is accused of serious crimes against the state be released by the executive because his tribal organization has so demanded? If we start doing that, there is no more rule of law in Nigeria. And the second one is from one of our viewers who describes himself as a very proud and strategic thinking Igbo son. And his criticism is, the Southeast has now become the weeping zone that everybody goes cap in hand to the president to go and appeal on our behalf. I am trying to paraphrase and shorten his comments. But he was saying that if we're really interested in separation of powers, then Mazin Namdekanu's fundamental human rights should be with the judiciary and not with the executive. So this is like tampering with separation of powers. So those two criticisms, how would you address that? Well, I, well, you know, this is a political situation. Whether we have legal uh, and uh, security concerns, we have separation of power, executive, judiciary, legislative. Um, but they come together at the head of the president. Um, Anybody in politics, people criticize any move you make. Um, I'm not surprised uh, that uh, some people think the move uh, is wrong one way or the other. But uh, we pray that uh, we get positive result and uh, have understanding among ourselves. I think those who are criticizing it are right. Yes, um, the judiciary can say non-persecutor or whatever how they say it in English, in the Latin English. Um, but um, if the president applies pressure on any of the uh, any of the sectors of uh, governance, normally some results, some good results come out. And those who are talking about legality should also tell us how legal it is to prescribe IPOP. Uh, is IPOP a terrorist organization? Yeah. Um, or is it a freedom fighter? Um, I, I don't know uh, why we should not think both sides and uh, before arriving at uh, our criticisms. But anyway, it is a political situation. Many people will have different ideas about how to approach it. I'm happy that the government, the executive, headed by the president, showed serious understanding of our presentation. And since coming back, actually, I haven't heard anybody you saying that South East should not go begging for the release of uh, and then began. Maybe we should go fighting, but we don't have the equipment. And we don't have the will. We fought before. What I have heard from those who fought in Biafra war is that we don't want any more war. And we should exhaust all possibilities of negotiation and agreement before talking about any war. And most of them think there should be no need for any war. I'd like to ask you, uh, Dr. Ezefe, what will have to give for all of these agitations to cease? And I'll paint a scenario. A scenario where, sort of like in 83, when Anujuku came back to this country, he vowed for elections in this, he vowed to be a senator. He ran in the senatorial elections. You know, what will have to give to get into that situation where people that agitate before will be part of probably the electoral process? Because I probably is saying Biafra or nothing. You, the leaders of the Southeast, are meeting the president and saying unconditional release. Something has to give. What will have to give for one big, strong, united Nigeria again? We are talking about the new Nigeria. We must have justice. 
we must have equity, fairness. Um, in fact, it is not far away. And with the result of Anambra election, <coughs> that new Nigeria is near because people are understanding each other now. All that has to give is insistence on rightness and the narrowness of mind. We need to talk to various people, find out their problems, and let them join others in solving all the other problems. If we can have a, a meeting of selected people, I, as a, a, a person, uh, started doing something like that. I wanted uh, the Vietiela chairman, uh, the Sheikh Gumi, uh, the Tokoto bishop, and many others, a few others, not many, uh, to meet. And they agreed that we should meet and look at Nigeria. Look, uh, what propels me in this direction is that God in heaven designed Nigeria for unmatched greatness. And Nigerian men and women, especially politicians, are messing up God's design. And I, I, I still believe that God's will must dominate people's or man's will. And we are going back to what God designed for us. He gave us an assignment. God gave Nigeria an assignment. Develop massively. Develop into a superpower. And raise the dignity and respect of all blacks on earth. Not just uh, Nigerians. Because we are the largest concentration of, of blacks on the face of the earth. And we should now begin to look around and see what is holding us back. <clears throat> Uh, the last time you were on this program, you predicted that uh, Charles Soludo would emerge as the uh, uh, governor of uh, Anambra State, and that has happened. But before we get around to talking about that election, someone just sent this in. He describes himself as a very proud and strate strategic thinking Igbo son. He says, Southeast has now become the weapon. Oh. Okay, Tundu says she has asked it already. Okay, but... Um, yes, uh, the beautiful voice from a woman asked that question. Okay, okay, because the gentleman is saying that Indigo is too big to be small and that uh, Indigo does not need to go cap in hand to beg Buhari for anything. But okay, let's leave that aside. But how do you feel after that uh, general election in uh, Anambra State and the... Uh, uh, victorious uh, uh, emergence of the candidate of Afga, Professor Charles Soludo. Let me uh, correct you a bit. Though. I said Soludo was most qualified and uh, Val was most ready. Um, I'm happy that the result came out the way it did. And not only Anambra people, Igbo people all, all over the place are celebrating that election because it gives us hope. It gives us the basis for fighting for 2023 presidency. If we had lost that Anambra governorship, it would have dampened our enthusiasm for uh, 2023 presidency. But as it is now, <laughs> I think uh, all those who can know, who should know, know that things will change in Nigeria. When I talk about uh, a new Nigeria, it's likely to be led by somebody from the Southeast. Right. I mean, none of us were there during <clears throat> your meeting with the president, but I'd like you to really take us through the conversation that you had and frame that conversation along the lines of um, the Buhari legacy when he leaves the presidency in 2023 and what he should have achieved by then. Well, um, 
we had our meetings before going to Asoro. When we got there, the president came so punctually and so determined. As we were looking at him speaking, we were very impressed by his concerns. I think this, the concerns he showed gave me the idea that with good advice and support from the populace in Nigeria, Mr. President Buhari may launch the comeback of Nigeria before he leaves office. Listening to problems is a very important aspect of uh, governance or leadership. He listened attentively to the problems and his response should, he understood, not just listening, he understood us. And uh, what did he say? It will be difficult, but I will look into it. What else do we want? That is what we need. And uh, I think the press can help. Uh, there are some things that make things difficult in Nigeria. Understanding differs so much. For example, when people say restructuring, what happens? To the person from the north, he understands it as resource control. And what the person from the north understands as resource control is that all your revenue will cease flowing to their sites. We should start from that. What is the restructure? Rearrangement of the polity as well. How can uh, people who are sophisticated just want to cut off revenue to local government and the state or no? No. Before we cut off revenue allocation, based on, just let's say the oil one, to any, any other group, we must make sure that every level of government gets sufficient internally generated revenue and not just cut off. And uh, uh, so I think my northern brothers and sisters should understand we are not talking about oil revenue when we talk about restructuring. We are talking about improving the understanding of groups within themselves and therefore improving peace within the country. Um, some of us who were there during the, our World War time, as he were, Obara, etc. No, how people who led suffered for the people that led it. Today, with the conscience dead in Nigeria, the only thing people do with their offices is enrich themselves and find what is in there for them. We can call a meeting, not any conference anymore, but select few in from each zone. Let them tell us what is wrong and how to correct what is wrong. So I think this interview you're giving me is, I'm happy with it because Nigeria has all it takes to be a superpower. For many years, when I end my letters, I say, you ask for Nigeria as a superpower. And it is not, look at it, the climate, plants, animal resources, mineral resources, human resources, many talents from many tribes. You see that this country, no group can move out of this country feeling triumphant. So if 
we can try to improve relationship with each other and make sure that we do justice. We can make Nigeria the greatest because it is so God, so made by God. So um, what I'm saying is that there is need for talk. Okay. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be just... Okay, sir. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, let me just... Uh, you, there is need for talk, but let me just add this because we have about three to four minutes to wrap up. In all of this conversation, have you, oh, guys, I know. Have you guys informed maybe the lawyer of Namdi Kanu to talk to him about this ongoing conversation? And uh, prior to him being arrested, have you guys, I'm, I'm, when I mean you guys, please pardon me, I have the Igbo elders, you know, sort of like a forum, talked to him even while he was away, before he was arrested, about the possibility of this solution that you are putting on ground now? Because it is one thing to talk to the president, well, another thing to talk to him. It is for him. Go ahead, sir. Well, we have tried to reach him, and we have reached his lawyer. And his lawyer is most understanding. Even Carol himself, sometimes when you put him uh, to direct uh, discussion, he is quite. Don't mind some of the outbursts some people are judging him with. No, uh, he can reason very well. But my point is not can. My point is Ibo. My point is uh, a job, South South, Middle Belt. All these people I mentioned have expressed dissatisfaction with the present situation in the country, and we should just we should talk about it. Well, uh, I mean, I asked you a question earlier on about the Anambra gubernatorial elections. Okay, you said, uh, you merely said yes. uh, this person is qualified, this person is most ready and all that. But I wanted your specific comments on the election itself, how it was conducted, the performance of the various agencies, and what you think, you know, this portends for the future uh, of democracy, not just in the Southeast, but the entire country. Thank you very much for that question. The first impression I get is that the president is getting his mind ready for doing good. Uh, the result of the election is success. Before the election, I wrote a prayer in many, uh, many uh, WhatsApp groups. I wrote a prayer for the success of the election. Now I think it has succeeded. And all kinds of problems are being raised. Some inconsequential problems are being caused. Well, you say something, somebody put to his uh, local government uh, as constituency. There was a primary election. And the primary election was for governorship. And uh, who is misled by a very innocuous uh, error? Who is misled? Is the are the voters misled by putting uh, Agata to constituency? They, there was a primary for, for governorship election. And there was announcement, everything for governorship election. If there was uh, an innocuous uh, mistake. That should not be of consequence. Uh, well, that, the law, that is with the lawyers. But let's, uh, our people who are making comments, uh, try to know that the whole Ibu are very interested in the outcome of this election. And anybody raising any issue on it, I appeal to the person. I appeal to the person. Please, cool down, cool down. There's no need to go fighting, fighting more. Now, those of us in Aguata are going to summon all our people because we fought for zone, and the zone was granted. Now, 
But those who were allowed and those who were not allowed, we try to persuade them, assuage them, uh, to stop anything caught. Uh, and we don't want another court, court uh, imposed to governor. Well, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Emeka uh, Ezeve, for joining us again on The Morning Show. Thank you very much indeed.